Hello guys, lady, welcome back to our new book. Now point nine part two. Business not in it. Form is only a beginning. It is the combination of feelings and functions, shapes and things that come to one in connection with the discoveries made up one goes into the wood that pull it together and give meaning to form. James Greno a cabinet maker notebook. It is critical that you understand the point I am about to make. For if you do, neither your business nor your life will ever be the same. The point is, business is not your life. Your business and your life are two totally separate things. At its best, your business is something apart from you rather than a part of you with its own rules and its own purposes. An organism, you might say, that will live or die according to how well it performs its role function. To find keep customers, one you recognize that purpose in life is not to serve your business, but that primarily purpose of your business is to serve your life. You can then go to work on the business rather than in it. With a full understanding of why it is absolutely necessary for you to do so, this is where you can put the model of the franchise prototype to work for you. Where working on the business rather than in your business will become the central theme of your daily activity. The brand catalyst for everything you do from this moment forward. Pretend that business you own or want to own is the prototype or will be the prototype for five or seven more just like it. That your business is going to serve as a model for five thousand more just like it. Not about like it, but just like it. Perfect replicates, clones. In other words, pretend that you are going to franchise your business. Not as said pretend, I'm not saying that you should. That isn't the point here, unless of course you want to be it to be. Further, now that you know what the game is, the franchise game understand that there are rules to follow if you are to win. Number one, the model will provide consistent value to your customers, employees, suppliers, and lenders beyond what they expect. Number two, the model will be operated by people with the lowest possible level of skill. Number C, the model will stand out as a place of impeccable order. Number four, all work in the model will be documented in operation manuals. Number five, the model will provide uniformly predictable service to the customer. Number six, the model will utilize uniform color, stress, facility code. Let's take a look at each of these rules in return. Number one, the model will provide consistent value to your customers, employees, suppliers, and lenders beyond what they expect. What is value? How do we understand it? I would suggest that value is what people perceive it to be and nothing more. And what could your prototype do that would not only provide consistent value to your customers, employees, suppliers, and lenders, but would provide beyond their widest Expectation? That is the question every entrepreneur must ask. Because it is the reason of or the end of his business. It is in the understanding of value as it is perhaps every person with whom your business become into contact that every extraordinary business life. Value can be a word set at the door of the business at the custom leave. We look at be an expected people from the business arriving in the mall. We look can be a word of recognition to a new recruit for a job well done or for what better to a season. So a person who been successful for years, we look can be the reasonable pride of your product of dedication to show in the process of explaining. Them to a customer who need more help than you should. Value can be a simple word of thanks to your banker for his consistency, con consistency.
value is essential to your business and to the satisfaction you get from from it as a crow. Number two, the model will be operated by people with the lowest possible level of skill. Yes, I said, lowest possible level of skill because if your model depends on highly skilled people, it's going to be impossible to replicate. Such people are at the premium in the marketplace. They are also expensive, so raising the price you will have charged for your product or service. By lowest possible level of skill, I mean the lowest possible level necessary to fulfill the function for which it is intended. Obviously, if your is a legal firm, you might have attorney. If your is a medium firm, you might have physician, but you don't need to hire a brilliant attorney or brilliant physician. You need to create the very best system through which a good attorney and good physician can be leveraged to produce exquisite result. The question you need to keep asking yourself is, how can I give my customer the resource you want, he wants systematically rather than personally? Put another way, how can I create a business whose results are system dependent rather than people depend then? System dependent rather than expert dependent. How can I create an expert system rather, rather than hire one? That is not to say that people are unimportant. On the contrary, people bring system to life. People make it possible for things that are designed to work to produce intended results and in the process, people who are system oriented. As all your people must be, learn how to more effectively make things work for your customer and for your business by learning how to improve the system. It been said, and I believe it to be true, that great businesses are not built by extraordinary people, but by ordinary people doing extraordinary things. But for ordinary people to do extraordinary things, a system, a way of doing things is absolutely essential essential in order to compensate for the disparity between the skill you your people have and the skill your business need if it is to produce consistent results. In this context, the system becomes the tool your people use to increase your productivity, to get the job done in the way it needs to get done in order for your business to successfully differentiate itself from your citizen. Is your job more accurately the job of your business to develop those tools or to teach your people how to use them? Is your people's job to use the tool you develop and to recommend improvement based on their experience with them? The another reason for this rule, what I call the rule of extraordinary ordinary people that say the blessing of ordinary people is that they make the job more difficult. The typical owner of a small business prefer highly skilled people because he believes they make the job easier. He can simply leave the work to them. That is the typical small business owner prefers management by application to management by delegation. Unfortunately, the the inevitable result of this kind of thinking is that the business is so cruel to depend on the whims and moods of it people. If they're in the mood, the job get done. If they're not, it doesn't. In this kind of business, the business that rely on discussion, how do I motivate my people, become the constant question, how do I keep them in the mood? It is literally impossible to produce consistent results in a business that depends on starting the people. No business can do it for your life and no extraordinary business try to because every extraordinary business know that when you intentionally build your business extraordinary business around the skill of ordinary people you will be forced to ask a difficult question about how to produce a result without extraordinary ones you will be forced to find a system that leverage 
your ordinary people to the point where they can do extraordinary results over and over again. You will be forced to invent innovative system with solutions to the people problem that have played small businesses and big businesses as well. So in the beginning of time, you will be forced to build a business that would. You will be forced to do the work of business development, not as a rent. Replacement of people development with as a necessary correlate. Number three, the model will stand out as a place of impeccable order. And the core rule three is a uh, Presentable fact that in a world of chaos, most people crave order, and it doesn't take a genius to see that the world today is in a state of massive chaos, war, famine, crime, violence, inflation, recession, a shifting, shifting of traditional form of social interaction, the threat of nuclear profil, proliferation, if Holocaust in all its horrific form and all communicated instantly and continuously to fixate it called customer consumer to all of us watching TV. All Elvin Toffler wrote in his revolutionary book, The Third Wave, most people surviving world around them today see only chaos. They suffer a sense of personal powerlessness and pointlessness, he went on to say that Individual need life instruction, life lacking in comprehensive structure is the aimless wreck. The absence of structure need breakdown, structure provides the relatively, relatively quick point of reference we need. It is this relatively quick point of reference that an orderly business provides customers and its employees in an otherwise disorderly world, business that look orderly say to your customer that your people know what they're doing, a business that look orderly say to your people that you know what you are doing, a business that look orderly say that while the world may not work, some thinking, a business that look orderly say to your customer that he can trust in the result that deliver and assume your people that they can trust in their future with you. A business that look orderly say that the structure is in place. Number four. All work in a model will be documented in operation manual. Documentation say, this is how we do it there, here. Without documentation, all routine I will turn into Exception, documentation provide your people with the structure. They need it with a written account of how to get a job done in a more efficient and effective way. It communicates to the new employee as well as to the old. That is a logic to the world in which they have chosen to work. That is, there is technology by which it all are produced. Documentation is an affirmation of other. Again, from Toffler, for many people, a job is crucial psychologically over and about the paycheck by making clear demands on the time and energy. It provides an element of structure around which the rest of the life can be organized. The operative word here is clear. Documentation provides the clarity structure need if it is to be, to be meaningful to your people. Through documentation, structure is reduced to specific meaning rather than generalized ends to literal and simplified tasks. The technician in each of us needs to understand to do the job at hand. The operations manual, the repository of the documentation is therefore best described as a company how to do it guide. It designates the purpose of the work specified step needed to be taken while doing that work and working on the cell business not in it 105. Samurai, the standard associated with both and process and result. Your prototype would not be a model with, with one. 
Number five, the model will provide a uniformly predictable service to the customer. While the business must look orderly, it is not sufficient. The business must also act orderly, it must do things in a predictable, uniform way. The next experience I had not too long ago illustrate the point. I went to Barber, who in the first, our first meeting gave me one of the best haircuts. I had ever had it was a master with the scissors and used them exclusively, never resorting to electric. She asked so many other do before cutting my hair. He insisted on washing it, explaining that the washing made cutting easier during the haircut. One of his assistants keep my cup of coffee, fresh in all experience, were delightful, so I made an um, appointment to return. When I returned, however, everything had changed. Instead of using the scissor, exclusively he used the seal about 50% of the time. He not only didn't wash my hair, but never even mentioned it. The, the assistant did bring me a cup of coffee. But only once, never to return, nonetheless, the haircut was again excellent. Several weeks later, I returned for a third appointment. This time, the barber did wash my hair, but after cutting it preliminary to a final trim, this time he again used the scissors exclusively, but unlike the first two times, no coffee was served, although he did ask if, if I would like a glass of wine. At first, I thought it might be the assistant day of it. She soon appeared busily. Working with the inventory near the front of the shop, as I left, something in me that decided not to go back. It apparently wasn't the haircut. He did an excellent. It wasn't the barber. It was pleasant. A fat, a feeble, seemed to know his business. It was something more essential than that. There was absolutely no consistency to its experience. The expectation created. And the first meeting were violated at each subsequent visit. I wasn't sure what to expect, and something in me wanted to be sure. I wanted an experience I could repeat by making the choice to return. The unpredictability said nothing about the barber other than that it was Stanley arbitrarily changing my experience for me. He was in control of my experience, not and I demonstrated little sensitivity to the impact of his behavior on me. He was running the business for me, for him, not for me, and by doing so, he was depriving, de depriving me of the experience of making decisions to patronize his business for my own reason, whether whatever they might have been. It didn't matter what I wanted. I, it didn't matter that I enjoyed the sound of scissors and somehow equated them with a professional haircut. It didn't matter that I enjoyed being waited on by his assistant. It didn't matter that I enjoyed the feel of having my hair washed before he set to work and that I actually believed it would improve the quality of haircut. I would have been embarrassed to ask for these things, let alone to give my reason for wanting them. They were all so totally emotional and so logical, how could I have explained them or justified them without appearing to be a book? What the barber did was to give me a delightful experience and then take it away. It reminded me of my first Psychological course I recall the professor talking about the burn child syndrome. This is where a child is alternatively um, punished and rewarded for the same kind of behavior. This is form of behavior in the parent can be disastrous to the child. He never uh, know what to expect or to how or how to act, it can also be disastrous to the customer. The burn child, of course, had no choice but 
to stay with the parent with the burn customer can go someplace else and he will. What you do in your model is not nearly as important as doing what you do the same way each and every time. Number six, the model will utilize uniform color, trace, and facility code. Marketing study tell us that all customers are moved to act by colors and shape defined in the marketplace. Different customer groups simply respond differently to specific colors and shape. Believe it or not, the colors and shape of your model can make or break your business. Louis Chekin from the Color Research Institute wrote about the power colors and shape in his book, Why People Buy. Little thing that are meaningless from the practical point of view may have great emotional meaning through their symbolism. Image colors are often create motivating forces. Sometime ago, we conducted a study of women shopping in a apparel shop. A young woman wanted to buy a blouse that was available in several colors. She had the blue blouse up to her face and looked into the mirror. She was blonde and she knew she looked good in blue. She figured the red one lovingly. She loved the color she thought, but she said it was too strong and loud. Segal reminded her that yellow was the fashionable color. She could not make up her mind between color, the color that she looked best in, the color she liked best, the colors in the current fashion. So she settled on a crave blouse and was reported to me a couple of weeks later that she didn't like a gray blouse. It was that, he said. She wore it, she wore it only twice. Some of the other purchasers of blouses immediately one of the inner tried to win. Some bought blouses because the color flatters them or the dose the color that was in fashion and some to color they like. He chose color that satisfy the strongest urge and fulfill the greatest wish just thing. Or the deeply psychology in the process of buying a blouse. Blouse. Your business is the same as the blouse in check-in, check-in story. There are colors that work and colors that don't. The color you show your customer must be scientifically determined and then used throughout your model on the wall, the floors, the selling, vehicles, the invoice, your people clothes, the display, the sign. The model must be thought of as a package for your one and only product, your business.